population genetics um, is a uh, is not, uh, their conclusions are not a guaranteed thing. If you have the wrong assumptions, choose the wrong DNA, you're not gonna get the answer you're looking for. The biggest problem with population genetics estimates is the assumption, the implicit assumption is common descent. And that similarity of sequence implies similarity of descent that they come from a common ancestor. You assume a tree when that's what you're trying to prove. What if there is no tree? Then what? Are you gonna be able to, to demonstrate that using your model? Probably not, because the model says, let's find the best tree that, that there is. It doesn't say, let's rule out the possibility that there is no tree. So a lot of Tree drawing and population genetics is based on the idea that similarity means you come from a common ancestor. But what we're finding more and more as we study more genomes is that the trees are not coherent. We've got lots of examples in just in common evolutionary storytelling where you have structures that are similar but didn't come from common ancestry. The biggest example being the octopus eye and the vertebrate eye. Um, and now as we're looking at the molecular level, we're finding the same sort of thing happening. Genes that are similar in divergent species that couldn't have been descended from one ancestor. What do we call that? We call that homoplasy, and it's a, a hidden secret in population genetics and in evolution. They don't want to admit that similarity now can't be used as a rule for anything. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's an open question and an active area of research. But it's, so that means it's premature to say that just because two things look alike, say chimps and humans, that they're descended from a common ancestor. We have to look at the details carefully in order to be able to say that. <laughs>